So, hi, Katie. Hiya, hi. Amazing to see you. Since the last time I saw you, saw you, can't speak, you've got married and you've been on Radio 1. You've had 22 million streams of Monsters. Yes. You, you've charted in some parts of the world, I believe. You're doing well in the Far East. China and Philippines. <laughs> yeah. If you look you up on chart metrics, it's like mental. Yeah, it is a bit scary. It is yeah. very crazy times. Yeah. Well, just talking about the crazy times, we were having a little chat before I pressed the record button about mm -hmm. adapting. Yes. Which, you know, people as human beings are, some of us are more able to do that than others. So you were talking about your experience of adapting and also your husband is, you know, he's top 40 at the moment as well. So at a time where you could just have taken a break and be ordering takeaway and doing nothing, you've both actually made huge headway. So do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, how that came about? I mean, I totally get on board with the whole Netflix and chill. I get it. Like... <laughs> it's very dark as well like here it's getting dark at like half four and you just don't want to do anything you know but I think for me like a r routine is really really big for me especially like since being um full-time musician like self-employed you have to really figure out your schedules and how you organize your time so like between work and play work and play whatever you want to categorize that and I think during lockdown it was really important for me and my mental health to be like right Monday to Friday is work that's what we do, yeah. work, Monday to Friday. And so that the weekends actually felt like weekends. And yeah. I could tell what day of the week it was. And I, <laughs> I people can't could do that. But for me, it was literally just a way to keep myself sane. But yeah. then the more I wrote songs and actually because especially with the, I did a lot of features last year. So like DJs that need top liners and singers. Um, so I did a lot of features last year, probably more than I've ever done in my life because I had all this time to sit and write. And the more features that got released, I was then getting more emails like, love this song that you just released with this guy, like how much do you charge, blah, blah, blah. So the income and the writing opportunities were rolling because it was all just it was all just a cycle. Like the more I released, the more people noticed. So the more people wanted to hire me and work with me. So massively blessed in that area. But I just felt like, yeah, like just hustle, isn't it? We talk about that word a lot. It's it's that idea of like nothing's gonna happen unless you do it for yourself. Absolutely. And I do feel like yeah, I've definitely taken a lot of time off it over the last year and like, yeah, enjoy being married with my new husband and like sorting the house out and there's been lots of lovely time for other things, but songwriting has still been 100% a priority for me, 100%. Well, it's definitely paid off. I should say congratulations, by the way, on the oh, wedding. Thanks. And thank heavens the date was before, you know, you couldn't I actually know. have people. I that would have been so disappointing. So you actually touched on something there. Um, Max, who is a great songwriter who comes to my songwriter circle, had noticed on your uh, Spotify that you'd released with a lot of labels. Yeah. And a lot of different people um, and that's obviously because you know work leads to work and then more people want to work with you but he had asked the question you know Monsters apparently has about four writers on it and you know you've you've obviously written songs completely on your own that are your own work and and he had asked the question you know how does it feel releasing and recording something that has input from other people that's not completely just your story you know how, how does that feel different than releasing a song that's all your own yeah, well, I mean, I guess it depends what it's for. If it's my project, like Monsters, well, that was written qu quite a few years ago now, obviously, and the guys that I wrote it with were amazing, and they were very, yeah, they just wanted me to help, like, help me tell my story through that song. So they, they, that was just all them. They were, they were amazing. Um, but the kind of difference between me collaborating on songs and me doing songs just by myself it's different flavors isn't it it adds different things I enjoy writing by myself to a certain extent I guess because no one I have the last word because no one else is there yes. <laughs> so that's quite nice like and I can kind of I guess stay within the comfort zone of my vocals or where I would usually write or stuff that I would usually write about but when I collaborate with other people you get to learn from others I really yeah. enjoy writing with other people because I go oh I didn't know that you figured out lyrics that way. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I pick up like techniques from other people that I work with. So I guess, yeah, I, I like working with other people and I also like 
writing stuff for myself both both have their own their own good points I find that about writing with you actually because you would structure a song in a much more commercial way than I would that you understand the structure of a commercial song and yeah. um, like in my generation we wrote much shorter pre-choruses for example and it's like yeah. you, you see someone else going about that and think ah yes that's what's making the overall sound come out like this yeah. and it, it's like so much easier to learn that stuff in the room with other people rather than just going on to Spotify and listening to a whole lot of playlists it's like you're learning in real time yeah absolutely which is great so I've got a couple more questions for you yeah, if that's okay yeah. what about publishing because you're signed to a major as yeah. a songwriter and actually Elena who is a great Irish songwriter had asked what are the benefits of being signed as opposed to being unsigned and sort of butterflying round different publishers I guess so yes I'm signed to Universal at this moment in time and I signed to them I want to say six years ago, so quite a, quite a long time ago now. And the reason they signed me was actually because of that song, Monsters, um, specifically off the back of that and the opportunities that that brought about. So that was really, really cool. Um, I think at the time, yeah, I was still working in bars because bars, like bar work is a very flexible, flexible job. So you're able to kind of fit it all around your sessions and stuff and still be able to pay rent. And so at the time, I think I signed to a publisher not only for the opportunities, but for the advance so that I could like try and live off it for a little bit and do less shifts so that I could focus more on music. There's always a point where, yeah, for musicians or songwriters where you're obviously really trying to make it full time, but it just doesn't. You ha it's very much the long game. It's very much the long yeah. game. I was doing it for eight nine years before I could fully do it full time so it's very much the long game the benefits of having a publisher so like I said would be the advance at the beginning obviously you have to pay it back over time yep. but it's a good watch to live off depending on how much you get and it means that you can kind of put all your eggs in one basket and really go for it with music um and then the second thing would be I know this is quite fickle but yeah when I'm in a song in a session and especially after I just signed, if it's like almost the name of Universal being stamped on your forehead yeah. gave you a bit of weight in the room. Like if I asked to write with someone, they'd be like, oh, she signed to Universal. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. But it, it's almost like you've got it stamped on your forehead and people can see it. And it kind of adds weight to you as a writer, which yeah. is because no, someone was willing to take a financial punt on you they were actually willing to spend money on your services you know so they had faith in you so how did that come about you mentioned it was because of the success of monsters was it just that monsters had had such a large number of streams that they couldn't really ignore your yeah. success with it or right monsters um in in Norway in Bergen with the guys and I was signed as an artist just to a small independent label in Manchester called Lab Records and it was one of the heads of Lab Records called Scott uh, Rothman he lives in New York and has contacts within Universal in Manhattan ah. and so and so he got Monsters played to someone and they were like, we really like the track and we sign her as a writer through that. So it was actually, it was even before the song was released that I got signed to Universal, but it was primarily because they heard that song and just thought it was a pop banger, apparently. <laughs> well, you know, you've brought up something which to me is like so key about working in music. It came about through relationships. Like relationships are sort of key yeah. to everything and um, who you know. I don't mean that in a sort of suck up to people way, but like having positive relationships and having you know as broad a network as you can like I always think that's great it is. advice it is. Yeah. I think a lot of people talk about this thing like the big break don't they they talk mm -hmm. about like that one big opportunity where you can get this one song in front of this one influential person and then all the stars will line up and that'll be your shot or whatever but it is it's like it's I think it's lots of things I think it's partially like who you know I think it's partially like who can help you up the ladder. I think it's partially do you actually work hard? Yeah. And you, like hustle every day and get back on your laptop and send emails and make stuff happen. And have you worked on your craft? Like have you worked on your songwriting and, and your talent? Like so that when something good does come along, you're like ready to go. So yeah. I think it's 
lot of things, isn't it? That's so important. And I sometimes encounter people who start researching the business end of things mm. before the point where they're actually ready to do that, where they could do with just like going like co-writing, learning a bit more about the craft. Um, and also, you know, just talking about the big break, we all experience a fair bit of rejection on the way to and it's like loads of doors will close and it's I think you know like not giving up at that point because you know I had a song out recently where one publisher that I've done some work with hated it but then um you know one A&R really liked it so it was like you know you don't sort of just yeah take, take people's feedback on board especially if they know what they're talking about but like don't completely give up no from from like one or two rejections and preferences haven't they yeah. and like you'll get on with certain people more than others and that's okay but yeah also I have to always tell myself like everyone's just trying to do the same thing we're all just trying to like do something that we love to make money and to get us through life and I sometimes sit back and I think if people don't email me back or they ignore me or whatever I'm like they're probably busy they've got other stuff yeah. on their plate you can't be mad at them like especially at the moment because you know um it's an awful thing to say but they could be sick or someone around them could be sick or uh, they could be working from uh, home and don't have access to their normal setup or you know uh, um and I, th I think um just not taking it personally but also not being annoying it's like if you don't hear from someone don't email every other day you know like yeah. send a follow-up email within a reasonable amount of time but like don't actually make a pain yeah. of I yourself like follow-up email maybe like a week after so like seven mm -hmm. days to that day yeah. i'd be like hey just wonder what your thoughts were on the above and then if they still don't email me back i probably would leave it unless it was like yeah. really cool and i said my maybe like one more but nah you're right like if yeah if people have got other stuff on their plate that's okay that's fine yeah because I think you know like sometimes you can forget when you're dealing with someone online which is the only way we can communicate at the moment that there's a real life human being on the other end who's got more to do with their day mm -hmm. than, than just listen to you so it's yeah. kind of being respectful of that you know I, I get the old person who doesn't understand the meaning of an autoresponder like I turned my autoresponder on at Christmas and I was so looking forward to a break and there were all these people that are just like yeah I've got this autoresponder but I'm just going to keep emailing anyway <laughs> this just like made me feel really stressed like my brain was yeah. sorry that was just a little don't do that people you know because oh. it's all about relationships so actually you don't really want to do something that makes you come across like you're going to be demanding or difficult to work with. Like you can be Elton John when you are Elton John. You know what I mean? Because yeah. in real life, like when we co-write together, we're in the same room with our co-writers for what, maybe about 10 hours at a time. And probably having lunch with them and, you know, like not really getting space from them, you know, for the whole of that entire day. And, you know, you have to be able to get on. Yeah, absolutely yeah. it's yeah it's 100 percent all about relationship i did like a like a songwriting booklet thing for uh for bim schools oh they're fantastic yeah yeah and um something the, there was like a section towards the end of that that i wrote out just because it fascinates me and mm -hmm. it was just my opinion on it that i'm sure other people have opinions but it was just like the responsibilities of each person in the room for a writing session so what's responsibility of a producer what's the responsibility of the artist and what's the responsibility of the top liner kind of mediator in the room mm -hmm. and it was really interesting to see the different responses and stuff and like I think everyone views it very differently but you're right it's relationship every time hands down yeah hands down. Which is, you know if someone does send you an email rejecting something and like you fire back basically losing your temper or whatever. like you, you just sometimes you have to suck things up for the sake of maintaining relationships because someone who doesn't want to work with you today might actually want to work with you next year and oh, you know you just happen. yeah I've had that yeah. happen for sure yeah so let me see I've got a couple more questions this this is a, a good question how did you get so many streams it just seems such a simple question but like kind of what people will be thinking like how did it snowball to that so right. again, this is amazing and I feel so blessed like that I didn't really have anything to do with the the fact that it now says 22 million streams <laughs> which is mad it, it definitely don't feel like I'm saying it casually because I'm not it's still crazy to me but um the main thing that happened was I think it was maybe the beginning of last year or the end of 2019 um this guy called Joe Shen um sung monsters 
like with his band as part of like a, it's kind of like an x factor but in China. oh right okay so he he chose i don't know how he got it but he chose monsters to like sing and he sang it in english and he sat and he wow his voice is incredible like he's like opera singer so he goes into like a woman's key and like goes hi anyway it's amazing i've watched it quite a few times now and he he sings monsters word for word on this big like singing competition chinese program that aired everywhere in china and it was after that it was after that that the the kind of everyone was like what is that song do you know what i mean and then they all shazammed it and then it came up with me so so do you that, think he, he just randomly strayed across this in some kind of spotify playlist and went i like that i'm gonna sing it or someone showed it to him I don't know but yeah I think it, because, because of the nature of the song and the message it's quite a simple message but it's quite a universal uh, like yeah. people relate to it and I think and it's quite yeah quite simple quite like innocent and but a real message of hope and positivity and I think yeah that definitely especially when you're going through different nations and different countries yeah. like that message will be quite uh, powerful and be able to translate quite well. Yeah. I think it, that might have had something to do with it as well, yeah. why, just, why it did so good over there. But, yeah, it's, it's like nice. When you're talking about relationships, I suppose you can't ignore the relationship with your audience. Like, you know, people oh, are listening yeah, and sure. you, you want them to be able to sort of hook in to what you're, what you're saying. So that was that was pretty amazing. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And, to, and for that song which I thought I mean it's seven years old now that song is seven years old so to to suddenly it like come up again and and it, it just explode and I think it might be something to do with yeah last year everyone was being like wow we've got a global pandemic on our hands like this has never happened before <laughs> like yes. what can we do and so I think this song probably did well as because of that as well like it being quite like a message of of hope and uh, positivity. So the in right the right time basically came for the song. Yeah. Uh, it had been lying around all that time just waiting to the moment where it, it, it sort of served people. It's and, so and strange. So speaking of the craziness of the pandemic, we were talking a little bit about the Longest Johns, your husband's band. They're currently in the top 40. Um, and again, it was like their income had come a lot from live performance and live performance is kind of out the window at the moment. So they could have panicked and kind of just crawled yeah. into a corner, but they didn't. So can you describe their strategy for? Yeah, I mean, they, were already, they already started doing quite a lot of like social media content because they're just, they're all very like techie. They love their cameras and they edit all together. JD's wife is um, a video editor as well. And she films a lot and they grade it all and they've, JD's got a studio, we've got a studio here, they've all got good microphones. So I think it was very easy for them to adapt and yeah. evolve and like start putting all kind of lots of social media content and stuff like that. It was quite easy for them. And because they're so not, <laughs> they're so not what you would expect from like a YouTube personality. If you say YouTube personality, you think of like, I don't know, like makeup tutorials and like, yeah. <laughs> hi guys, like you think of a big like charismatic, I don't know, person. Whereas these four, they're just four bearded, quite nerdy, hilarious guys. And yes, um, I, I, I hate to phrase it this way, but they're like the musical equivalent of the hairy bikers. In a way, <laughs> you know, like that you want to have them in your kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> they're just all four of them. They're just so down to earth, and they just love singing and drinking beer. And that's a good combination. Yes, but yeah, they evolve very quickly to to putting all their stuff online and doing live streams um where they can like sing together obviously and harmonize and stuff and like yeah it just worked people like up for it again music being that kind of like thing to look forward to that thing that's gonna like yes. get you out of the bad mood if you just sat by yourself at home you know during a pandemic and speaking of people being sat by themselves um apparently they have a thousand people streaming their, their online concerts which is yeah they, yeah, the, the one that they did, what day is it? It's Friday. The one right. that they did on this Wednesday just gone, there was 1,300 people watching for like the whole three hours. Wow. 
which is mad and it's like all from all over the world as well which is crazy so. Wait a so some people will probably come in at like really weird times and their time difference and I actually said this is something I want to go to yeah. I'm putting this in my diary yeah yeah which but, is amazing so yeah live streams for anyone saying they can't do gigs find a way to do live streams because yeah. yeah there's definitely a audience out there for sure you know, the, the big thing that's coming out of that is the need to adapt um because we can't we're in a time at the moment where we can't play live so we do have to live stream and um sometimes do things that maybe we've been a little bit afraid to do before or like there might be people who feel like unprepared to do that and think well all I've got is my my laptop and my mobile phone but you it's just that kind of using what you have isn't it and it's um, like Instagram live you can live stream on Instagram now so that's literally just your phone so yeah definitely it's great you know and it's great to hear that this can be done like obviously we're all looking forward to you know festivals returning and being able to go to live gigs and it's going to be amazing when we can do that but just for the moment when we can't you know like my personal feeling is you can either complain about it yeah. and get upset about it or you can actually say right well I can't do this so I'm going to have to find another way which is not saying that we don't support live music or that it's not you know a real problem for a lot of musicians out there who have lost a lot of income but just it, it's a time for thinking out of the box really out of the box yeah absolutely and like even if like even if you can't live stream together as a band, let's say you've got like guitar, vocals, bass and drums all in different houses, right? You can still definitely like record something and then mash it together for a video and then put that on YouTube yeah. if you wanted to. Do you know what I mean? But I definitely think like, like we keep saying, adapting and evolving, it, it's something we have to do that as musicians anyway. Like yeah. the older I get and the more I have to be like, right, I have to think what would a young person want to write a song about? Like, <laughs> that type of adapting, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that it is, is exactly. it is. it's like, because they say that most of us still listen to the music that we listened to when we were sort of um, between 15 and 20. Mm. But, you know, if you want to work in music, you, you have to kind of keep in touch with what's current and what people are listening to. And we do have to constantly adapt. And the industry itself, you know, just a few years ago, well, a few years ago to me, probably a lot of years ago to you, we had downloads and people actually paid for music. Now they don't so much. They stream everything. We all know that pay on Spotify is is horrendous, you know. But these changes have happened and we have to, to work out how we are going to position ourselves within the industry yeah. as it is and, like, how to go ahead with it. And, you know, it's maybe not as cut and dry as it was in the day, like, say, our grandparents' generation where you looked for a record deal and the record company paid for your tours and your promotion and and this kind of thing. I think now, like, we have to be jacks of all trades. Like, you've got to know how to market yourself. You, you might need to, to be able to do everything at first from designing a website through to actually filming your own videos and doing video editing. It's like... Like, the whole jack of all trades thing, I definitely mm-hmm. agree with. But also, if we're all just trying to do the same thing, we can all kind of help each other out. There's stuff mm-hmm. that I could write for people that they could help me design a website or vice versa. Yeah. So if you just actually ask around and the amount of like messages that I get on uh, Instagram nowadays, ju- just do favors for each other. Why not? Yeah. Like, why help each other all out? And then we can all get there together. Yeah, this is the thing. And like, um, people have complementary skills to you and you have complementary skills to them. That's the big thing about co-writing. Actually, I should have said earlier on that, you know, if you're a vocalist, but you don't play an instrument, and you meet someone who is a cracking guitarist who just knows everything about harmonics, you know, yay. Yeah. It's like trying to find people, like, because we all know what our strengths are. And it's like trying to find people that bring what we need to the table. But you, you're you helping them as well. Yeah. You know, it's not just that you're using their skills. They also need you. So because music is a collaborative thing like and it shouldn't in my mind be something where you're actually in competition with other people like that you work with on your local scene it's it's like if you see someone who's really successful like just asking yourself well what how did that happen what happened there? oh no friday evening you yeah, absolutely absolutely can i ask you one more question because i thought this was a good question yeah. um someone had asked about getting noticed because I think we've actually covered that in some of the other things we said, you know, that, you know, 
someone picked up your song for a massive TV show in the most populous country in the world. You know, <laughs> that was kind of good. That was going to get you noticed. And, you know, the relationship thing of, you know, your song being played within Universal. Because let's face it, if you had just sent a demo out of the blue and they had no idea who you were, it's very unlikely yeah. they would have played that song. But emailing is what that's called. Like, I don't know how much of time that actually works. I know you hear, like exceptions of this random artist who's now huge that literally just walked into universal foyer and like slapped a cd down and said i'm your next biggest thing but that i don't think you should like pin all your hopes on something like that to be honest but i do feel like yeah like we're saying it's it's a lot of things it's um it's a kind of combination of a lot of things but the things that we're in control of are networking getting up every day hustling making a plan doing it every day every day yeah. all I can say is that what is in your control you should be doing and what's not in your control so like the whole like big break or someone getting to hear it from somewhere or whatever that will only happen if you've worked on your talent you've got the best songs that you've ever written in your hand ready to go do you know what I mean there's so much more that is in your control that you can yeah. wear. I think that about you, because I, I reviewed a couple of your songs on Vocal Media recently, and in the same article, I'd covered a couple of other people. So I was going around downloading photographs to add to the, and you had like a high res photograph that was good quality, where some of the other artists actually had, you know, it was very tiny, came out blurry. Like the resources that need to be there, in your case, are there. So yeah. that if people are interested, they can find. Yeah everything they need easily you know and, and you know got the consistent branding going the messages there you know like everything has been yeah absolutely built. like every yeah. I, mean, I haven't done I haven't done it this year yet because I'm gonna get some more photos done but every year I tend to try and like get a five new press shots and when I say press shots it's literally just me and Robbie taking photos up in the top bedroom like that like with some good lighting that's it and me like wearing some sort of like tracksuit or something with weird lipstick like so always like five new press shots I update all my bios across like Twitter Facebook everything yeah. I yeah and I just kind of go through the year and think like right what do I want to do this year do I want to work more with these people who do I want to write with where do I want to go to like yeah just update everything start from scratch every January try and figure out what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Okay, so hopefully people will see this before January's out and they got, you've got, what, by week? Yes. <laughs> that was really good advice. Well, thank you so much, Katie. I'm sure that's going to be really useful. No worries at People all. watching this and wishing you every success this year. 